What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today's video, we're talking spring bass fishing. I'm giving you my number one tip to catch bass right now. Isn't it nice to be actually thinking and talking about spring bass fishing? That is my favorite time of the entire year to bass fish. That, that pre-spawn into the spawn, you know, everything's warming up, everything's thawing out, everything's active, things are green, right? It's just a great time to be outdoors, great time to be tossing the baseball around, just a great time. You start mowing your lawn, all right? It's a good time. People are happy. They've been cooped up all winter and bass fishing is at its best. I love springtime, hopefully you guys can tell that. Uh, I love wearing sun shirts and putting on sunscreen, right? Putting on that face mask, just thawing out, being warm. It's been a long few months of rain and some snow. We Heck, in Tennessee, we even had like an ice storm this year, it's crazy. But spring bass fishing is so much fun. You know, the fish are aggressive, they're feeding up for that pre-spawn and uh, it doesn't get much better than that. So today's video, my number one tip is go red. You guys have probably seen the last couple few years, just the explosion of red baits on the market. You know, red chatter baits, red crank baits, red lipless baits, uh, even spinner baits with orange or red blades on them. And there's not, it's not a coincidence, right? This is the time to be throwing red. Now, a couple different reasons I think that it is. Like I said in last year's video when we recommended this, it's like, I don't know why red works. It just does, especially in the spring. And uh, I think there's really two, in my opinion, there's two main causes for that number one is visibility right as we start getting that warmer weather we still get those early spring late winter storms that come in and kind of murk up the water you do get those those warmer storms coming in or the warmer weather uh, the areas that have snow now that snow starts to melt so you get a lot more uh, current a lot more water fluctuation in your fisheries uh, but more importantly, with the rainstorms and stuff, you get that muddy, murkier water, and I think it's a visibility thing. I really do. You know, when, you, when you're throwing a, a big blade chatter bay with a bright orange blade on it, those fish can see that and feel that from a long ways away. So visibility. And then number two, fish eat crawdads, right? It's just obvious, you know, a crawdad or a crayfish is uh, one of a bass's well, it depends on the fishery, but fisheries with crawdads in them, that's one of their main forage base, right? That's one of their main things they feed on. And uh, you can always tell when you're on a crawdad fishery, a lot of times you'll look at the fish when you catch them and you'll see their lips are orange. A lot of times they'll have their bellies down in the mud. So you'll, you'll look at their belly. It'll be kind of tinted like an orange or a tannish color from them down there in the mud, kind of rooting around. Uh, their lips are orange, like I said. So you can always tell those crawdad eaters. But those are, in my opinion, that, that's why it works so well, especially in the spring. You know, fish are feeding up. They need to bulk up for that spawn. Those crustaceans, you know, having that good protein in that crawdad, that crayfish, really uh, helps those fish bulk up. So today's video, I got some of my favorite baits uh, and we're gonna kind of talk about through those, through the different categories. But to understand it's a visibility thing and it's a crawdad thing. Those are my, that's my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but uh, I know for a fact, throwing orange or red or some kind of day glow orange or, or spring craw in the springtime works so don't miss out make sure you're throwing some kind of red this this year now before we dive too much into the baits uh, i want to explain something there i mean when you jump on tackle warehouse or you walk into your local tackle shop you might see a row of pegs with different color red baits now i'm not recommending you go out and buy all of them Hopefully after this video, you'll understand what best suits you and your fishery, but I would recommend you get a at least 
two of them. Now here's why. When your water is murky, let's back up a little bit. Depending on your fishery, murky or muddy, it's all relative, right? So if you're in a fishery where you normally have 10 or 12 foot of visibility, you get one of those rainstorms, those early spring rainstorms come in and it murks up the water to now you're down to one foot of visibility or 18 inches of vis visibility, that's muddy, right? That's murky. Now, if you're in a fishery that typically has two to three feet of visibility, you get one of those storms come in and now you have a foot of visibility or 18 inches of visibility, not that different, right? So not that muddy. Those fish are used to hunting and feeding in that murkier water. So you don't have to go as crazy, but something like this, that's that Z man. That's that big blade. You can see I'm holding that up because it has that big, bright orange blade, right? Uh, you guys have probably seen over the last few years, the explosion of like the fire craw colors, flamethrower, you know, spunk shads and, and all sorts of bright orange, bright red stuff. It's because these, these colors really work this time of the year. But getting back to these colors, you'll have some with like day glow orange, like the most obnoxious, brightest orange and red baits you've ever seen. And then you might have something like this. This is a little Atlas 55 by Nomad. It kind of has like a, a green back, but it has a red belly. So not nearly as obnoxious or, or bright. And that's what we're gonna cover today, you know, in my favorite baits, why you might need uh, two colors in that bait because depending on your water clarity, it's going to depend on how obnoxious or how bright of a color you need to go. So we've already already covered that fish need to see the bait and that fish need to eat crawdads, right? If they if they're eating them in your fishery, now it's really easy to adjust. Typically, this time of the year, I have found that the brighter, most obnoxious colors typically pull pull the biggest bites. Now you're definitely gonna limit the amount of bites you get when you're throwing, you know, a bright red jackhammer versus more of a green pumpkin, little bit of red jackhammer, right? You're gonna get more bites with this. This typically is going to pull the biggest bite. Uh, I think it's just a visibility thing. I think it's just an aggressive thing. I think that those those big fish, those big females that are moving up for that pre-spawn into that tr spawn transition, they see it, it's loud, obnoxious, and they eat it. So uh, that guy right there, that's that, that uh, fire craw, jackhammer. You guys might have remembered just a couple years ago, maybe last year, year before, you know, you couldn't get these things. They were sold out for months. A lot of these baits were sold out for months because of the red and, uh, you know, went in tournaments all over the country, but they were going for exuberant amount of money on eBay. Um, pretty crazy. So hopefully this video is getting to you soon enough that you can go through and pick a handful of baits out, check out, get to your local tackle shop, get them before those pegs are empty or they're sold out online. But for me, a chatterbait springtime is one of my go-to baits. So typically, like I said, I might not start off with this guy. That's if I'm getting a lot of baits and a lot of bites on a chatterbait on like a some kind of bright chatterbait. If I want to pull a bigger bite, that's when I'll tie this guy on and really go look for that kicker bite. But uh, that's an extremely uh, vibrant color, extremely uh, vibrating chatterbait but for the most part i'm sticking with some kind of of uh you guys know how much i love the jackhammer z-man came out this year with that new that's that chatterbait elite evo that thing is sweet you know has the coated blade you don't have to worry about the blades chipping uh saves a little bit of pennies in your pocket right it's not nearly as expensive as the jackhammer and it works extremely well so i'm going with some kind of of jackhammer or that uh, that new elite more importantly i have two main uh trailers this time of the year and just like every video guys i'm gonna cover a lot of stuff so i'll link these these colors and these products down below in the video description so you don't have to write everything down but uh the kamikaze swim on that's an awesome awesome chatterbait trailer and then obviously the spunk shad hog farmer spunk shad missile baits has their uh, 
got licensed to do their own custom color. So here you got uh, Lava Craw, there's Flamethrower, there's some really cool red colors, but those are two of my favorites. Yamamoto, you know, they have the Zako. Again, those craw patterns in the springtime are a must. So I'm going with some kind of chatterbait because that that is my one of my go-to uh, baits this time of the year. But depending on water color and depending on the amount of bites, that's where I'm going to adjust my colors from that that really really bright down to something a little less aggressive. Okay. Now on the flip side, if I'm getting a ton of bites on this guy, that's when I will switch to this guy and see if I can pull that bigger that bigger bite. But uh, here you have kind of a green pumpkin chatterbait with some red to it, I have a green pumpkin spunk shad on the back. Now I'm not telling you guys to go completely away from your bait fish colors, right? Your shad patterns, your bluegill patterns, because fish eat those really, really well, okay? I'm not saying to get rid of this jackhammer or this, this elite chatterbait. What I'm saying is make sure you have one of these readily accessible to tie on in case you want to go for the bigger bites. Uh, and there are definitely days where you're gonna get more bites on this than this. So you'll have to play around with it. So again, a chatterbait uh, is a, one of my favorite baits this time of the year, but being able to change out your trailer colors, you know, switch from a real bright orange skirt to just a more red skirt, that's gonna play, pay dividends this time of the year for you. You're gonna have to adjust depending on your water clarity and the conditions you have, but make sure that you're throwing some kind of red in there. Okay, so we talked about chatterbaits. I have some a couple deep cranks for you. I have some lipless cranks for you. Square bills. Square bills is another huge category for me especially this time of the year as we get those uh afternoons warming up you know you start feeling like you need to take that hoodie off it starts getting kind of sweaty you're like hmm this is feeling pretty good those fish feel that too right so they're going to pull up in the shallows they're going to get up into that warmer water and kind of thaw out as well they're enjoying this warmer weather right they like this warmer water they're going to get up there shallow and what better bait to throw that you can deflect off of than a square bill. Now, I have a couple different square bills for you. I'm not going to go through every color. Like I said, I'll link those down below in the uh, video description. But you guys have known for years, maybe you haven't followed us for years, but those of you guys that have, know that that River to Sea Biggie is our go-to spring square bill now we got some really cool baits that have come onto the market the last couple of years that have kind of not really replaced but definitely have added or taken up space in our in our tackle box but that biggie is an awesome square bill especially in the springtime nice rattle to it it deflects really well but we got two different colors so just like the chatterbaits you know you're, you're talking about water clarity you're talking about visibility you're gonna have to play around with your colors so remember back earlier in this video, I talked about getting one or two different colors. Here you have uh, Spring Craw and Delta Craw. I'm sorry, Blood Craw and Delta Craw. Okay, Blood Craw, Delta Craw. These are two of our favorites, but you can see this color right here, a lot more translucent, a lot more ghosty. This one has, Delta Craw has a lot brighter belly on it. Okay, so just like those chatterbaits, you can adjust, you know, you can adjust your trail on those chatterbaits. On these square bills, you might pick something that's a little less aggressive or a little more aggressive, but you have to have at least one of each of these guys, okay? And that color, okay? That biggie is an amazing springtime square bill. One of our favorites, we talked about it last year, the 13 Fishing Scamp. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with 13 Fishing's hard baits, but it seems like those are discontinued, the scamps. Uh, but this guy right here has quickly replaced uh, just the loud and obnoxious side of those square bills. This is the uh, Atlas 55 by Nomad. Listen to this thing. An awesome, awesome sounding square bill. Now, as 
as the water clears up, you know, we'll talk about that here shortly, but as the water clears up, you get more and more visibility. I'm gonna go towards more of those silent or less aggressive sounding square bills. But when that water's muddy, you need that bright color and you want that sound. So that Atlas, you can see, just like in that biggie, two different colors I'm recommending for you, okay? Something really, really bright and something really natural. Kind of has that green, kind of ghosty back, more of that red, reddish orange belly. Still is a craw pattern, but just not nearly as uh, loud as that guy right there. So I shouldn't say loud. The color, they're both equally as loud. The color, not nearly as aggressive. That Atlas comes rigged with uh, BKK hooks, little EWGs, short shanks. That thing is an awesome fishable bait right out of the package. So that has quickly jumped up into our springtime uh, square bills. Couple more for you. This guy right here, Bill Lewis ATV. You guys have probably heard us rave about this uh, all last year, all through the spring, all through the fall. This is a, an amazing square bill for fish and shallow. Like I said, those fish are up there shallow. This thing deflects and is it, it's almost weedless. For as many hook points as this bait has with all those treble hooks on there, this thing is amazing at coming through cover, coming through laydowns, wood, flooded stuff. This thing, it's almost, I'm not gonna say impossible. Everything's possible, right? But it's, it's really hard to get this thing hung up. But again, got two different options for you. Two different colors of red. Just make sure that you're throwing a version of red. A little bit more subtle of a rattle, but still has a little bit, a little bit of a rattle. And then completely silent. This thing, and, and just like crankbaits in general, colder weather or colder water, you want a more tight action crankbait. Same thing with your square bills, right? As that water warms, you want more of an aggressive, wider kicking square bill. This uh, Demiki BTC, this is the 60 and the 50, are amazing shallow water square bills, and they're completely silent. This thing deflects really well. It's high float. That little BTC, uh, BTC 50, a lot smaller size, can go ultra shallow. And uh, these guys are awesome as well. But like you heard, completely silent. So if you're going shallow, that water's a little bit clearer. You don't need that real loud, uh, obnoxious rattle. Going with a silent square bill is killer too. But again, make sure you're throwing some kind of red. Now, two more for you. And then we'll talk lipless and then some, uh, then oh, we'll do some, what's the other uh, crankbait? So this guy right here, that's that Spro Little John. I'm just showing you guys some of my favorite square bills, some of my favorite crankbaits. This is a thinner bait, tighter wobble. Little bit of a rattle, it's kind of like got a little rubber ball in there for casting purposes, but that's an amazing springtime square bill. And then this guy right here, the OG Ott's Garage, this is the Tiny Four. This is a balsa bait, it's supposed to act like a balsa bait, real tight wobble, cold water. So as you transition from late winter into early spring, this is what my go-to. Now. I grabbed these because I want to show you these two different colors, right? Again, has a little bit of orange on there, but not nearly as bright or bold. Start with this guy. If you're getting not enough bites, uh, you can you can back it back it off. Go with something like that, a little bit more natural. But again, if you're looking for that bigger bite, you want to throw those brighter colors. That thing's a, didn't didn't rattle it for you, but basically a silent bait as well, okay? Two other categories, we'll talk cranks real quick. If you're a deep crank guy, obviously our crank bait, you can see that that uh, that color right there is a lot like the River to Sea Cold Blooded, made by River to Sea, but we designed it with a brown back. Brown back, orange spots, a little bit more, uh, it's just different. You know, if you look at a lot of these backs on red craw crankbaits, they're almost, I mean, 95% of them are black. So we went with more of that, that duller brown with some orange to it. Again, more of that natural color. 
But if you're looking for uh, a deep crankbait, cold water crank as you come through that late winter, that's exactly what this bait is designed for. And that's exactly what this color is designed for. Again, we're not replacing all of your shad and bluegill colors. Just make sure you're throwing some kind of red this time of the year. A couple other ones real quick for you. The Spro Rock Crawler. That's a uh, that's an awesome, awesome uh, little crank. And I would say that that Rock Crawler probably has the most options as far as crawdad patterns right your reds your oranges your greens you know not all crawdads are orange right some are blue some are green there's a lot of different colors so uh i like throwing that red during the springtime but if you're, you're looking for different variations of that red maybe more ghosty color or a solid more uh solid pattern there's a lot of different options in that spro rock crawler and then one other favorite for you guys this is that Mega Bass, Mega Bass Z2. Okay, real small crankbait. Gets down that eight to 10 foot range. But again, we're looking at these patterns, okay? Kind of that dulled down green back, bright orange belly, and then red shiny back, bright orange belly. Make sure you guys are throwing some kind of red. Again, that's my number one trick this time of the year. Uh, you know, we talked about it in all the different baits, the chatter baits, the square bills, um, the deep cranks, last but not least, the lipless, okay? Even my lipless, for the most part, I'm throwing American shad or some kind of ghost minnow color, but in the springtime, I'm going with the Cross, the LV500, uh, the Jackal, the TN70, those are our go-to spring craw, Delta Craw, those colors are lights out. Again, I'll link all that stuff down below. That guy right there, little Bill Lewis. That's the um, that's the hammer trap, that new one. But again, we're looking at that color, that red to orange. Guys, you have to throw some kind of red this, this time of the year. The spring is where it's at and it's where those fish love to eat. They loved eating that red, the red baits, the, the red blades, the rattle traps, the square bills. It, it just works. You got to take my word for it. But that is my number one tip. Again, like I said, we're not replacing all of our green pumpkins and our ghost minnows and all that sort of stuff. Heck, I even like to throw orange with red <laughs> uh, Senkos. That's that 956 color. I've thrown that for a decade or so. That's an awesome, awesome spring color soft plastic. But as you can see, guys, red is go time. Spring bass fishing, it's here. I'm excited. Don't get left behind. Make sure you guys have some kind of red bait tied on. Doesn't matter if you're deep cranking, you're square billing, you're throwing a trap, or a chatter bait, make sure that you guys have some kind of orange or red bait. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I'll try to get those as soon as possible. But uh, just like every video, I'll link all these, these baits down below in the video description and my favorite colors. Again, as that water clears up, go away from that real bright stuff, but still have some kind of red in it. And if it muddies up or murks up, go with that real bright red or that day glow orange. And if you're looking for that kicker bite, go with that really, really bright color. But guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.